Before we start off today's video, if you guys would like to join my Discord server, link will be in the description and it will also be in that pinned comment. But anyway, let's get right into the video. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This here is the Ford Echo Sport, on which I used to call the Eco Sport, on which Wikipedia says Echo Sport, but people probably still say Eco Sport, whatever it is. It's a crossover by Ford. That's, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't like this car, and well, in this video I'm going to show you why I don't like this car. Now I did do a poll that said, is this car with the tin? Tin meaning metal, not because it's made of tin. And some guy commented saying that, you know, yes it looks a bit odd, but he said he liked it. So, or I think that's what he said, but something like that. So obviously some people like it, and if you do, you do, but I don't. But anyway, that's really all I can say about it. Let's get right into the review. So, when it comes to the exterior, the preface lift, well, it's. It, I don't really like the look of this car. I mean, it's, it's not ugly ugly, but it's ugly in the sense I don't know why it's ugly. I mean, it's got so many grills that look like they're separated. Even, you know, even Top Gear was saying like it's got a billion grills and it's going to catch a cold. But, you know, why are they all separated? You know, got their own silver bit. You know, you've got one at the top of the Ford badge. The one in the middle has been split into three for some reason. And then you've got one below it as well, which doesn't have a silver strip, but it's still... A grill why why exactly it just it doesn't look completely right on the facelift it has been improved a lot now I still don't like the look of it mainly because of the shape but obviously it does have the same grill shape as a Fiesta or a Focus or Mondeo and they obviously got their grill ideas from Aston Martin from when they owned it so it does look somewhat better it does look a bit more premium but still it's still not that good looking unfortunately the side has been its worst profile for me honestly I mean the wheels they look so tiny I mean they look like they can't even support the car and you've got a spare wheel there which does not look right especially from the side I mean I think there's only one engine that you can get all-wheel drive in in the European market slash UK market I think anyway I know it was mainly two-wheel drive but still it doesn't look completely right and even without the wheel, you know, wheels still look extremely tiny, like, you know, like, they're too small, they can't support the damn thing, I mean, somehow they do, but it just looks ridiculous, it looks like wheels on, I don't know, a sofa. The rear, well, on the preface lift, well, you obviously got that spare tyre, which, again, it just doesn't look right, this car doesn't need it. I mean, why do you need this? You don't. Uh, the facelift, well, that obviously improves it because that spare tire has just gone kaput. You obviously got what looks like a normal number plate section. It looks like a normal car there, but it looks rather tall for what it is. And I know it's kind of like a crossover SUV thing, but it's still, it looks a bit too tall and a bit too thin. It just isn't correct. When it comes to the interior, well, this is the pre-facelift and obviously it's pretty much the same as what the Fiesta came in, the pre-facelift version. Now, I don't know if the pre-facelift Focus also looked like this, I'm not sure. But there's so many buttons and you've got an entire keypad like you used to get on an old brick phone on one side. And then you've got buttons on the other side and you've got some stuff in the middle and then you've got two buttons on top of that. It's like, what? Why do we need this keypad? Honestly, why? Obviously the facelift does improve things quite a bit, it is much more premium looking. I mean you've got a big infotainment screen and the buttons while well, there are less of it. Yeah, they're a lot less and there is no keypad anywhere. When it comes to the performance, well you've got petrol and diesel engines which is good. When it came to petrol you've got a 1.5 litre engine. That engine only lasted on the pre-facelift. But on the pre-facelift and the facelift, you did get a 1 litre engine. Now, these were obviously turbocharged and you could get 97, 123 and 138 horsepower. 
Now 123 horsepower we know to be in the Fiesta as well as the 97 one, but 138 horsepower, that's a lot for a 1 litre 3 cylinder, that's a lot of pressure. So I can't imagine that this engine will have a good time once you know it gets old. It's gonna have a lot of pressure. When it comes to the diesels, you only got 1.5 litre. Now on Parker's, I found that there was an 88 horsepower one, a 93 horsepower one, a 98 horsepower one, and a 123 horsepower one. Whether all those are true, I don't know, but that's what's been listed, so I put it in there. So what we're going to do as normal, as if we only got many engines, is we're going to take one petrol, one diesel, and then just look at the specs of both of them. So when it comes to the petrol, I have chosen the 138 horsepower one. So, 1 litre inline 3 cylinder with a turbo, 138 horsepower and 133 pound feet of torque. This one is front wheel drive and it does weigh more than 1200 kilograms. This car does come with a 6 speed manual gearbox, thank god. 0 to 60 is 9.9 .9 seconds and the top speed is 115 miles an hour. When it comes to the diesel, I chose the 98 horsepower one. So 1.5 litre inline 4 cylinder with a turbo, 98 horsepower, 159 pound feet of torque. Of course being diesel they will produce a bit more torque than petrol. This one is front wheel drive, I believe the 123 horsepower one did have all wheel drive if I'm not mistaken and that may have had automatic but this one didn't as far as I'm aware. So again it weighed about 1200 kilograms and it had a 6 speed manual gearbox. 0 to 60 was 13.2 seconds and the top speed was 105 miles an hour. So that one's a bit slow, it does seem a bit gutless, I'd go for 123 horsepower if you're going to go for diesel honestly. I mean I know if you buy diesel, you know, performance isn't your main objective. But still, when it comes to the practicality, well the boot is 356 litres big and that is slightly below average for what kind of car this is. Now it's not good that it's under average and that boot, that boot is not good. Instead of lifting it goes to the side. Now if you're parked in a car park and you reversed in and there is a car behind you or a wall behind you, you can't open that boot to its full potential. It's gonna get stuck so you either have to find a different spot or drive forward. When it comes to the rear seats, well legroom was kind of tight if I'm being brutally honest but because the car is tall as you saw headroom was actually decent so when it comes to having six footers they'll be happy on the headroom but on the legroom they won't be. Legroom is more of kids sort of deal so if you use this to have kids in the back then that's fine. When it comes to the handling, it's a bit of a woolly mammoth. So it was kind of unforward like. So when it was first introduced, it was just kind of sloppy. And it was odd because A, it's a Ford and Fords are known for handling quite well. And B, it's based on another Ford, which I'll get to in anything else. But it was just kind of sloppy. And even when they did change it in 2014, I know they changed the European market. They changed some suspension and all that to make it more forty, but you know it was still a bit vague. And because it was taller and there was more suspension travel, there was a lot more body roll, and I mean a lot compared to Fiesta. There was quite a huge amount. It was very noticeable when you did go around a B corner, and it was quite jittery. The ride, you know, you go over a bump and it kind of like flatters itself. You know, it doesn't like it. You know, it shakes you about. Which is, again, very un -Ford like and very un-passenger car-like. It's, it's not Ford's greatest hit, let's put it like that. But, you know, it wasn't the worst thing to exist. I mean, sure, body roll was immense and it was a bit vague, but, you know, steering was very fiesta so it was very on point. And, you know, it did have a bit of fun in it, but the body roll and that jitteriness of the ride just made the handling a bit off-putting. When it comes to anything else, as we know, even though I saved it for here, it is based on a Ford Fiesta, the Mark 7 version, and you could get an active model which had more body cladding, 
whether the suspension had been raised, I'm not sure. Maybe it had, but I don't know. But you can get more body cladding and where you go. They call it the active, and I believe only the facelift had this. I'm not entirely sure. But what is the verdict? And the verdict speaks for itself, honestly. So it has plenty of engines to choose from with many power outputs as well. It has decent headroom and the facelift does improve the looks. I say improve because, you know, still not good looking. When it comes to the cons, well, where do I start? Have you got the time for it? Legroom is tight, boot is below average capacity, boot lid is definitely inconvenient, the pre-facelift interior, there are too many buttons, there is lots of body roll, and the handling well, is unfold like as a result. Uh, the spare tyre does add to the ugliness, the wheels do look ridiculously small, that's just a personal matter, it's not something you need to worry about, that's just something I don't like about it, and the exterior is just, well, generally just ugly really. This isn't really one of Ford's greatest moments. But anyway, that does conclude the review of the Ford Echo Eco Sport. Uh, if you would like to check out my reaction channel, different types of Dyson spheres. Type one is to build a ring of orbit. Basically lampshades, not bloody like Dyson spheres. Wirelessly transfer the energy back to the home planet. A type two is to build a bubble of satellites around the That's star. A golf ball. That's a golf ball. That's a golf ball now. The light, but not all of it. And a type three is to completely swallow the star with a solid shell of matter. That's a disco ball. That would be great. I will leave a link in the description below. If, you but moving on. Next week's video is a bit different. Normally I blow a car and get you to guess in the comments what it is. But it's a bit different now I have filmed this video already and I have edited it. But I said in last week's video that this is the car I was going to do so I have to put this first. But anyway it's completely different. You see my face again and it's not a review. So I'll give you that hint and that's all I'll give. But that doesn't matter if you want me to review a card then you can leave it in the comments below. And if there's enough information online I will happily oblige once there is no videos currently in the running. But anyway I'll see you guys next week for that video which I hope does get me more subscribers and more views because it is somewhat different. Peace.